All right, guys, in today's video, I'm going to take you through a couple of exercises which can help you build a big, thick, 3D looking upper back. First of all, before we get started, let's have a look at some of the muscles which we are trying to recruit in these exercises. As you can see with this diagram here, you want to be recruiting some of your traps, your rhomboids, rear delts, teres major, minor, infraspinatus, and possibly a little bit of your upper lat. But we're trying to focus on the top half of the back, not the lower half of the back. Something which I've noticed with my own training is that elbow positioning is going to have a big impact on which muscles you recruit, which muscle fibers you recruit. Okay, so whenever I do a rowing movement and I keep my elbows as tight to my torso as possible, there's a lot more lat recruitment, okay? I'm focusing more on recruiting the muscle fibers in the mid to lower portion of my back. Whereas if I do a rowing motion with my elbows high and flared, I'm recruiting much more of the upper half of my back, okay, the rear delts, rhomboids, and so on. So when it comes to exercise selection, when it comes to building your back, you want to think about where you're positioning your elbows when you're doing these rowing movements. So let me take you through some of the exercises which I do to help build my upper back. First of all, we'll start off with the deadlift. Now, my variation of doing this deadlift is I'm gonna be performing it off platform or off boxes so I'm basically performing three quarters of the movement the top three quarters of the movement I'm eliminating the bottom portion because I don't want to you know over engage my legs when I do this I want to keep as much tension as possible on my back and whenever I'm performing this I like to keep it very slow controlled I'm almost tapping the floor I'm trying to maintain tension throughout the entire movement now I'm not saying this is the only way to deadlift but this is the way I'm manipulating this deadlift to try and maximize tension on my back and to grow those upper back muscles. I'm almost performing a constant lat spread whenever I'm doing this deadlift. The next exercise is a plate loaded row, but we're using a pronated grip. So again, we're thinking about keeping the elbows relatively high. And as we drive the elbows back, we're getting a good squeeze at the top of the movement. So think, just think to yourself, how, how far back can you drive that elbow back and squeeze the contraction at the top? You shouldn't be feeling it in your lat, you should be feeling it in your upper back. Moving on again, we have a variation of a T-bar row. What I've done here is used two attachments. I've used the close grip attachment and used a wide grip attachment, feeded it through. So I'm almost doing a wide grip T-bar row pretty much. And what I've done to try and maximize the range of motion in this movement is only loading it up with smaller plates. So load it up with fives or tens. If you load it up with a 20 kilogram plate, you're gonna restrict the range of motion, okay? So that's not ideal. And again, I'm bending over, I'm trying to keep reasonably parallel to the ground, not completely, but around, no no higher than 45 degrees, I'd say. And letting the shoulders drop at the bottom, driving the shoulders high at the top, keeping elbows relatively high and squeezing hard. The next exercise is a bent over barbell row, but we're gonna use a pronated grip. I've found that whenever I use a supinated grip, where your palms are facing the ceiling, Keeping your elbows tucked in and driving hard does recruit more lat, whereas when using palms facing down, it recruits a little bit more of your upper back. And I'd say with this exercise, you don't necessarily need to be too worried about being parallel to the ground. If you're gonna be a little bit higher up, that's okay. You're gonna focus more on your upper back. The next exercise is a bent over barbell row, or the Meadows row. You're gonna be standing 90 degrees to the barbell itself. You're gonna bend over. This is quite uncomfortable, I'm not gonna lie, but once you get your positioning right, your posture's right, you wanna drive that barbell high, keeping your elbow flared and squeezing the contraction at the top. Now, since you are gonna be lifting quite a bit of weight when you do this, I recommend using your spare hand, resting it on your knee so that you can minimize the amount of strain that is on your lower back. Moving on, we have a seated wide grip cable rope. We're gonna use the wide bar attachment, pronated grip, and we're gonna minimize the amount of torso movement which is occurring, okay? So no swinging backwards and forwards. You're just gonna over-engage your lower back when you do this, and you're also gonna make the exercise easy for yourself. Stay fixed, keep your elbows reasonably flared, and squeeze at the top of the movement. Moving on, we have the face pull. You can do them standing, you can do them seated, doesn't really matter. I prefer to do them seated because I'm more fixed in position. You're gonna be using the rope attachment, and when you do this, you wanna think about driving the rope up towards the center of your forehead. Okay, so you're gonna be flaring your hands either side of your head. Imagine you're pulling that rope apart at the top of the movement and you're gonna be holding the contraction ever so slightly. I like to keep constant tension when I do this so I don't fully relax at the bottom of the movement. The next exercise is a static 
body weight row. So you'll notice in this exercise, you are actually moving your body around a fixed object. So obviously we're gonna have hands a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. We're gonna use a pronated grip, we're trying to keep elbows quite high. And you've got to pull your body all the way up to the bar. So you're aiming to touch the bar with your sternum. Obviously you can see that I'm elevating my feet in this example, which does make the exercise harder. So you don't have to do this if you're a beginner, but if you want to maximize the difficulty, elevate your feet and hold the contraction at the top of the movement for as long as possible. Final exercise is standing barbell shrugs. Now, obviously this is very trap dominant, but what is a big thick upper back without a nice set of traps? As you can see in the diagram before, the traps make up a huge part of your upper back. So why would you neglect them? So I tend to go heavy with these. You can use a number of different variations when doing this. You can do the barbells, you can do dumbbells, you can do the hex bar, but just aim for a maximum range of motion and squeeze the traps at the top of the movement. So there we go guys, a couple of exercises to help you build a big, thick, strong upper back. One thing that is gonna be incredibly important when doing these exercises is your overall shoulder mobility and shoulder health, okay? So if you have rounded shoulders, you know, poor posture, you're gonna have a hard time retracting your shoulder and squeezing the contraction. So the effectiveness of the exercises isn't gonna be great. So you need to fix that first, or at least teach yourself how to retract your scapula. I have made a video on that, so if you wanna check that out, I made it a while ago, how to improve poor posture and fix that inability to contract the back muscles. Check it out. Okay, so thank you for watching. Hope this has been a beneficial video for you. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you soon.